The hub for me feels like a community of people who are striving to create a world where values and principles are important. The typical office seemingly is not really providing individuals with what they need in life. We need personal interactions, we need professional interactions, we need to be plugged into our community so we know how the work that we're doing benefits society and I think the hub is a really great example of what can exist if people are given the flexibility that they need to do the type of work that they want. I learned about the hub in 2007 and met Jonathan and heard about his vision for these spaces to be in all major metropolitan areas around the world. When things fall apart, as, as they have done in, in the global economy, there's a, and not dramatize it too much, but there's, there's, a, there's a thrilling opportunity to, to reimagine and to, to rebuild the status quo, um, like we'd never dreamed it before. And, and hubs in, in a small way have been the convening ground, almost the kind of the village square of our age. Being able to help to birth and create this kind of urban infrastructure for the sustainable or impact economy that's local and global in nature in cities, um, just it was too, too good to pass up um, the opportunity to, to get this thing started here in LA. So the thing about the hub that matters and, and matters now is that in an era of over-virtualized Facebook interactions of social networking, which are all actually quite wonderful and additive to collaboration and social change activities and innovation, if you will, we've lost a sense of place, a physical persistent interaction. And what the hub does and does extremely well is it reconnects that fabric and brings people together in a way that allows them to interact on a day-to-day -day basis around stuff that really matters. Having community in place, sort of a physical proximity, is a really powerful experience day-to-day -day and leads to collaboration and stuff that you can't even imagine. Come into a main pit area, which is all hot desks, these are, none of these are fixed desks, so people are coming in here on a regular basis five, ten hours a week to as much as 40 hours a week between 9 a.m. and 6 p.m. and just plunking down in small teams. This is a, there's always a couple of hosts on duty uh, who actually curate the space. It's not a, a co-working space, it's actually a community platform. So you've got connections being made, people being dragged from meetings over to meet other people. And then we have Ber the Berkeley community, and so, uh, so close and also new, uh, has another 250 or so members. So in, in total, we're about 800 members. All of this area breaks down in about 15 minutes, so you can flip all the tables, roll them out of the way, and then there's been about 300 of events in the last um, 10 months in this space for 15,000 people. And so what they do is basically clear it out. There's a 12-foot screen that drops. People, you know, they're doing documentary screenings. They're doing author books tours. They're doing uh, Kiva or Ashoka um, trainings uh, for social entrepreneurs. The way that the space breaks down is, in addition to the hot desk, area, you've got publets or team areas, project areas that are on a month-to-month -month basis that are semi-private. And those are alternating with little privacy booths that can be signed up day of for up to two hours. When my friend told me like a year ago about this place, and I, was, I could not imagine. As a Taiwanese, I just could not imagine what is this. And yeah. uh, well, but then um, when I come here, I feel very warm and it's very, I feel excited. That's because the air conditioning is broken. Yeah. <laughs> This is the handy dandy intergalactic hub communication system. If we have these in every hub, then the hubs in fact become these nexus, these sort of like communication nodes for the whole global system of social innovators. A lot of people ask, okay, but what is the real value of the hub? Besides the working space, a good environment, the hosting opportunities, the uh, getting to know people, the access to networks, that is already a lot of value. But at the same time, we also want to have the impact on the more global, on society. But there is this nice feeling of going to a hub, it's different, but you have this same welcoming vibe, and that is so, I don't know, it's a fantastic feeling. It's like a home everywhere. And not only home, it's the place, and the network, and the friends, and the ideas, and all of that.
Disneyland in Prague, in Zurich, at their opening party in London, in both in London and Stockholm. And Madrid, I'm going to go there in March. And we've travelled, as we've heard, from all parts of the world to actually get here. And what, what has made us come here is a lot of intent. And we brought that intent from Melbourne to Atlanta, Halifax, from Johannesburg, Tampere. It's all brought us together. And this intent and this intention around creating something together is what is going to fuel us in the coming days. And we try to capture what is that unique thing, small but very powerful, that is in every interaction, in every hub, in every relationship that we establish. Holding our. Actually, every public or private space, every organization, and if they do have those kind of the honesty to kind of have conversations with each other, dealing with tension, and actually kind of making sure that we are doing it for the greater good. I'd say this is a life, life cycle of a change maker. This is, this is like the awakening. It's kind of like, okay, what am I going to do? And then, like, kind of the call, okay, this is what I want to do, or this is the purpose, then I commit, then I take action, and I do a project, and then I scale, and then I retire, or whatever. Right? A lot of the things that are being prototyped here, whether it's the legislative decision-making process, or whether it's different uh, patterns and kind of habits, almost culture habits, of how do we make decisions as a big group, it's very inspiring to see them being formed for the first time because I really feel this is something that can be here for 10, 20, 30 years. And it's just amazing to witness the birth of it. When we talk to new members in Stockholm, we say that we are a virtual community come real. Social networks start mm -hmm. to be effective once you reach a critical mass. Once you reach like a critical mass, then it explodes. I would like not sustainable growth but enhance outcomes of every hub to be the metric that hub companies assess by. So it's how, what is the qualitative growth in outcomes that, that the hub initiative is providing, that to be the issue. We have a lot of people awakening up to, oh, I want also a better world, yeah, how great, you be, la, in transformation. And they're all coming. Those guys we attract, no problem. And we like them, and they're nice, and they're cool. However, I'm excited, and my admiration really goes to the ones that are actually doing stuff, uh, going for action, and have the ambition to scale up. In a way, I do believe that the people that come to here uh, already have a certain connection to changing the world, to social enterprises, to sustainability, or to just having a community that's behaving or acting from a different sets of values and so in a way that people that come at the door have already a resonance with that piece of information and want to check out whether yes or no it's really for them. After somebody you know, has kind of seen the light and hey I want to do something meaningful or be a social entrepreneur, how can we actually uh, make this work and manifest this and what we want to do is collect the best practices we can find all over the world. So uh, waking up the workplace, global conversations to awaken a world of conscious business. Well, and it's also how do you define success, right? Because uh, I mean, so many times uh, you just start over and you know, and some project fail. And I would say that the project that we're working on now, that I feel has really been a success, that might have been like the the fifth iteration of an idea that I've had since 2006. You know, and every time you just work with it, and then you know. Sometimes it doesn't even, you know, doesn't you don't even get further, or you try it alone and it doesn't work, and then you know you find some other people who have like, you know, uh, matching skill sets. And, you know, how could you tweak that? How could you improve that? And uh, I mean, uh, I'm in it for the long run anyway. We had um, one hub member, and she was working with young people from the street, and she really wanted to involve them to design fashion. And as soon as she entered the hub, she found some partners to work with. She met somebody who could help her build a community of street children and even built um, and designed a whole store for her. She also connected to the network via the hub, so she's building a brand in 
Brazil and she's building a brand in England. So I'm the founder, I'm the, the, the guy that was crazy enough to, <laughs> to start the company and put 80, 90 hours a week that are required to start anything. The balls are, are made to be sold in the US market and we're, now we're talking to a lot of soccer leagues and soccer teams so they would have a, a ball that they can really feel uh, very proud of knowing that the, it was made in good working conditions and that some of the kids that uh, that play with the balls they can they can learn about for a trade and, and get introduced to this concept. What Zenda is also doing is supporting projects that are using soccer for uh, social change in the U.S. and abroad. So these are grassroots projects that are starting in communities like Oakland or like Rio in Brazil or in the outskirts of Buenos Aires where somebody from the local community would will develop a, a program to keep uh, children off the streets, to keep them in schools. You made like custom made balls with like the league logo. With the league's logo on it? Check it out. Very cool. Nice. So trade certified. We have 750 soccer balls that are coming from Pakistan. I should be on, on the sea right now, hopefully they come here. The Hub Ventures um, cohort, the current mm -hmm. cohort, I'm working directly yeah. with seven companies. <laughs> We're actually getting into planning and strategy and doing more uh, in-depth work. Hub Ventures is an example of a critical app on our Hub platform in the Bay Area. It takes a wide range of applicants a couple times a year through a winnowing process, a filtering process, which does have a professional sort of panel reviewing, establishes a cohort of about 16. They basically share ideas, build trust, help each other out, make connections, have mentors around them, um, funders looking at them. They merge, they acquire, and at the end of the three months, uh, and the twist to the story is, they decide who gets $75,000 in seed investment capital, true investment capital into an early stage for-profit entity. Um, the top three or four each get $75,000. It amortizes all the expenses of that across the hub apparatus, the platform. The platform's already there. The relationships are already there. A lot of the ingredients of success of this kind of a program are already built in. All this is is an, is an Uber application running right on top and brings in money, organizes the human capital, and wraps it around a peer-driven um, model where the peers are actually the ones spending the three months in deep diligence with each other. So at the end of it, they know which three or four have the greatest um, likelihood of success, have the least BS quotient, etc. And that's... Um, that's working really well and I think is an example of the kind of era of innovation that we can do with major applications on the Hub platform now and into the future. My name is Swapnil Chaturvedi. Right now I'm part of the Hub Ventures program. I'm working with 16 other members. I started as a, as a one-man team, but right now we have seven uh, full-time employees in India and two more uh, people um, in US. My company uh, is called San & Co. We basically do sanitation in urban slums in India. If you're not aware, actually, there are 650 million people in India that do not have toilets. There are many organizations who are trying to solve this issue, but the model that we have developed is basically trying to make sanitation both affordable, accessible, and profitable, so that we can provide uh, more and more toilets to more people. We have designed these toilets which people can use inside their homes and uh, every fourth day a serviceman comes in. The waste gets collected in a tank very safely and securely and we take this tank to a central processing facility uh, where we uh, produce electricity and fertilizer from the human waste. With that electricity we charge batteries that we give back to the slum, uh, slum homeowners uh, so that they don't have to use kerosene anymore. But we do have a service fee for the batteries and we do have service fee for the toilets but they both cost half of what people actually pay right now for using the paper use toilets or for buying kerosene. The team in the hub, I'm, I'm very fortunate to work with four people who are all entrepreneurs with projects in India. They are doing a Yelp-like platform for migrant workers where migrant workers can voice their opinions. The other one is doing mobile works, how to outsource work from companies in US to mobile phone owners in India who are poor, but they can do some micro, micro works, micro outsourcing. And the third one is Anu, Anu Sridharan, she is a CEO of Next Drop. Basically, they are working around water access issues in India. 
So having a diverse set of uh, experience in all the different areas, we have been able to enrich each other in the sense that uh, Anu has been able to put me in touch with uh, one of her friends who is doing waste to energy projects in India. So we have been, we have started talking to them regarding developing uh, partnerships in the future. People are changing initiatives and, and are moving between collaborations as staff and volunteers and advisors uh, and investors and mentors. So we are right now running a 50 family pilot. We are serving 172 customers in India. And uh, come next month, we want to ramp it up to 500 users. What can I do so that I can prove my business model and at the same time serve a bigger population and find out different things uh, that I need to find out. So this is what uh, Hub has helped me in doing. It has helped me refocus and refine my uh, business model. My name is Kristen Walter. I am Thalisa Food, and we're the co-founders of an organization called Feel Good, and we work here at the Hub. And Feel Good is a social enterprise. We are a national organization. Uh, we uh, have college chapters on 27 campuses across the country and two internationally. What it looks like in the end is students running nonprofit delis on their campuses and raising money and awareness for poverty eradication. Uh, at these delis, they're specializing in gourmet grilled cheese sandwiches, and so we are ending world hunger one grilled cheese at a time. Because with every sandwich sold, they're raising money for organizations with a proven strategy for empowering self-reliance and they're having a conversation about the human condition, poverty and how together as a community we can respond. And then as far as what the Hub has done for us, it's just been such a uh, vibrant, very relevant community. It really kind of accelerates your learning in ways that you couldn't foresee. So it's vital that we're here and I would say it's contributed to kind of the innovation of our program and uh, the development of it as well. Accelerator, I think, is a wonderful term and it does accurately reflect taking a wide range of folks and giving them a set of tools and interactions and filters so that they can very rapidly move through a set of choices and experimentations that allow them to get further faster better. The most important thing that I learned from running the Hub Amsterdam is that you really need to have a strong network of social entrepreneurs before you even find a place. I think for a while we were too focused or maybe out of sequence in thinking that we needed the physical space first and we really uh, took a step back and rerouted to put the community building aspects first and that has really streamlined things in a pretty powerful way for us. Um, so really operating uh, from a place of, of having a coffee with 100, 200, 300 different people and really having a sense of of their hopes and their frustrations and, and the opportunities they want to see for themselves and others. So hi, I'm Brian. I'm the founder of Hub Seattle, and we are in Proto Hub, as we like to call it. It's taken everything, everything I have, meaning um, relational skills. You have to know how to talk to people, be able to cast a vision, uh, tell a good story, uh, because ultimately to build the world we want to live in, you have to know what the narrative of that world is. It's almost convincing people of something that they don't know they need yet. And the early adopters, the visionaries totally get it. So we have 54 actually founding members, contributed, paid to be members. So it's a good sign in terms of the interest. One of the things that without even much strategy that I've done right is joining alongside the groups that I want to collaborate with um, and supporting what they're doing and then waiting to see if they're interested in supporting Hub. We have 40 members right now. Today you'll see about five in this space because we're in the midst of Snowmageddon 2012 here in Seattle. So a lot of individuals are staying home and not braving the icy roads. Bainbridge Graduate Institute's a partner that Hub has been speaking with about co-location. They're really compelling in that they were the first sustainable MBA program in the nation. Our tagline is changing business for good. We have about 200 students and they're all learning how to do business in a way that makes the world a better place. The big reason why this works for us 
is that we uh, graduate a lot of entrepreneurs who are doing startups. We've had 37 startups come out of the school so far, and we imagine that those are going to go into the hub space and get the kind of support of being around a bunch of other entrepreneurs. Social entrepreneurship is in very early stages, I would say, in, in Los Angeles, and we're looking across traditional industries to find individuals who are, who are looking to make impact in whatever field it is that they're working in. So um, what we're coining is a new class of professionals, uh, the, in impact, the impact professional. And it's an individual that through their day-to-day -day work is considering the environment, considering social issues, and the human side of what they do every day. There is a real opportunity for us in a very human-centered way to use technology and common space together to create a platform for, for really authentic bottom-up idea exchange. Kind of right where the conference rooms will be and uh, along each side there'll be walls that will sort of create what we're going to call, I think, brainstorm alleys. <laughs> and using, you know, using the walls that are solid to have whiteboard sessions and have people basically working and brainstorming. What we're looking at is having a cafe area here in the kitchen. Just thinking about how the members are going to be meeting with one another and collaborating. This all would be more of the co-working open area. You'll have sight line down to these significantly expanded windows. So it'll be kind of a... Yeah, it's, uh, I call this Change Alley and this is, I don't know, Progress Boulevard or something. So, you know, this idea of this kind of this flow and then all of the houses on the streets are the community. It's a neighborhood. It's a neighborhood. The Hub and the Chronicle building are at the intersection, literally, of, sort of Skid Row meets Shopping District meets Dot Com meets Financial District and, uh, and with Mass Transit right at it. Um, the whole four acres are going to turn into a whole innovations campus in the next uh, five to ten years that the Hearst Corporation is backing along with Forest City, which is a major developer in the United States. And um, we have uh, hopes that the hub will be a centerpiece for that. When you come up from downstairs, you'll come up the spiral and you'll come out here and you'll see a, a whole common area. That there'll be a cafe, another sort of cafe area, kitchen will be in here. The suggestion is, and what we're working out in terms of sort of new models of how, uh, how folks w get things done on a day-to-day -day basis is, is how little do you really need that's dedicated and how much can be collaboratively consumed. And um, where, whereas normally in a conventional um, high-density office space, you'll have almost 200 square foot per person. At the hub, we have about 45 square foot per person. But this will be their primary area, but they'll float out. And the reason why it's okay that they're all crammed in here is that they also have all of this to flow, flow through. And when they have interns in the summer, they can go out here. When they need a, a real Tony meeting room, they can rent it out here. They don't need to carry a conference room for 12 people 24 seven. They've got one right out the door. So yesterday was the first time at the Hub in San Fran, and just right away when you come in, really warm environment, it's a big space, and filled with different people, and really feel the energy inside the place. And I really like the interior, that's the first thing that kind of pulled me in. Love that staircase, and just the energy in the offices. Uh, and it looks like a great collaborative workspace, it's something that should be in every single city in the States, and I know that it's a big presence all around the world, and uh, looking forward to seeing it in New York City. So since uh, we last met, um, we work on a second order that's coming in. Um, we work in a second order that's coming in in about a, a about a week, and that order has a lot of uh, customized balls, uh, per trade soccer balls. So that's been working really well, and we think it's a part of our business that can uh, scale a lot. And then we've also been uh, talking to different companies about co-branded balls, and one of those companies is Google. So we're really excited about the opportunity to uh, make a Google uh, fair trade uh, soccer ball and hopefully get some, uh, some exposure from that and 
have it at the Googleplex in uh, in Palo Alto. Well, so we're here always um, before uh, Soul Cup starts, and it's a chance just to um, to meet everyone uh, in a casual way before the conference starts and see some good old friends that you haven't seen in a while and just get into the Soul Cup spirit before uh, the conference uh, kicks off tomorrow at 9 a.m the biggest social capital conference in the United States. So it's a great chance to meet potential partners and to meet uh, potential investors as well. The Hub and SoCap are part of a systemic approach because really we're all about the entrepreneurs. We've proven the model of social enterprise. You can do a business that has a mission focus and return capital to investors. It's okay to you know, take a breath, go forward, seed the early stage entrepreneurs. And then those early stage entrepreneurs need a place to work together, which is why we have the hub. It's where change goes to work every day. And so those entrepreneurs learn from each other and collaborate because they're all working on some part of the same problem. They could be working on solar panels in Africa or waste in India, but there's still an element of behavior change. There's still an element of the need for social media. There's still an element of telling their story more broadly. And so they work together at the hub. And then the great thing about the hub is that all these world changing folks don't feel stupid or they don't have to explain themselves that I'm a different kind of business. I'm for profit, but I'm really for mission. Or I'm a nonprofit and I have earned income and I'm not a different kind of nonprofit. Inside the boundary of the hub, nobody has to explain the mad endeavor they're engaged in. So they get the fuel of the funding, but they get the collaboration and the emotional support, and then we gather them and people like them around the world. There are 26 hubs from around the world that we gather at SOCAP, as well as you know, we have people from 56 countries here. Being able to, you know, to talk about these things over coffee at the hub. Um, being able to work on each other's businesses, share ideas, being able to find out about networking events and go all over Silicon Valley and Berkeley and Stanford and you, know, you name it, you know, to be able to have that kind of camaraderie and learning how to deal with limited resources and how we can make these things work. Creating containers, right? Containers where we can get creative with alchemizing ourselves, the environment around us. But I, for me, that's what really draws and I see overlapping. It's just containers, new innovative containers. Alchemizing? Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> it's a little Paracelsus there. <laughs> okay, I want the, I want your rap, your little bit on the, on the urban planning and the and how and, and the Renaissance. Go ahead. You're on. You. The relationships and the, the bumping into one another and that free, free flow of ideas because of space happens in cities. And so what we're thinking about the hub is a microcosm of what urban planners and city planners have known forever about the creation of public spaces and the importance of different individuals, you know, different uh, demographics, people mixing with one another to generate new ideas and basically create and innovate, which is the product of people coming together. One of the most exciting trends to me is just the rise of the sharing economy. Everything from car sharing to community gardens to tool sharing libraries, peer-to-peer uh, -peer rental, peer-to-peer -peer lending, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and I think co-working spaces and the hubs are really uh, a, a critical piece of that. We are this third space 
where people can come and be productive and work um, and further our economy while building the social cohesion and the trust in relationship that we really need to, um, to innovate and to realize new ideas and make partnerships. Does the hub become that space in between the town hall, the town square and the library? So the hub is actually connecting you to the people and then the places and the ideas and then works on projects which make it more resilient and more sustainable. What's special and really crucial about the hubs is that they get the DNA of co-location. We are social beings. We need each other. We co-penetrate each other's lives. So creating physical infrastructure where we can recognize the true nature of humanity. And that's what's magic about the hub. It's, it's bringing together those kind of people who believe that we need to make a transition in the world to a system where life values rule over the money cycle. And that transition is happening and that's why we have this sense of movement and change right now because never before has the distance between what is and what could be been so huge. Could it be that in you know, 10, 20 years from now, the hub has performed this critical role in amplifying conversations, experiences, and connections between disparate locations? We'll see. It's not just about co-working, it's not just about social entrepreneurs, it's not just about innovation. It's all that would put it together and it's about a better community and a brighter future. If you think about the first 20 some odd hubs around the world, all were 5,000 square feet or less. They were all single hub, single market visions. And you hit the Bay Area and you go to a 2.0 where it's a regional vision, multi-hub. So if this is 2.0, when we're moving into LA, Seattle, DC, et cetera, you know, how do we not only do 2.0, but ideally take it even to the next level, right? What does that look like? And we're very excited about uh, what we're gonna do with Hub Open and how it will become a part of the Bay Area and really collaborating together well as a team. So that's what our points are. <laughs> We're at an interesting time in the evolution of hub, especially in the states, because there are several hubs up, um, you know, each building its own community of varying sizes, varying needs, kind of ideas. But we haven't yet kind of hit a tipping point where enough hubs are online as a network to really see uh, system effects, you know, and, and the idea of the, the network taking on a different form than just the summation of its parts. I'm very excited, to say the least, about the idea of what this looks like when we do hit that tipping point. And rather than a linear progress of one new city at a time, we hit an exponential curve of a greater awareness um, between cities, you know, even cities that don't have hubs yet, of this type of energy, this type of creative uh, concentration really happening in the hub network. And I think as more hubs come online, we'll start to kind of feel the tremors of that. And hopefully over the next year or two, it'll all be kind of unleashed. Connecting with Hub Oaxaca, for instance, the second largest population outside of Oaxaca lives here in LA. So there's all these ethnicities that are existing and living and have ties back to their native countries and communities that we're really excited to think about how the hub to hub exchange, if you will, between hubs that are coming online in Brazil and in Guatemala and Mexico City and Guadalajara and how we can basically help strengthen the ties of entrepreneurs on both sides in countries of origin and Los Angeles. And so I think that that's also a really unique uh, piece that LA has to, to bring to the table in terms of the, the hub network development.
I have been studying and, and talking to people about social entrepreneurship and impact investment in the States, but here in Costa Rica is a very new uh, concept because one of the major um, obstacles of people like me, and I'm, I'm, I guarantee you there are thousands of people like me right now, uh, is the access to technical assistance and to financing under this concept of you know sustainable business because it's really hard for a bank for a traditional bank to understand the value added of doing sustainable businesses they don't have people that can quantify that particular benefit you know after seeing the video and understanding more the hub concept i feel better because i thought i was alone trying to develop a place where people can just think freely and perhaps make those those ideas a, a reality. So, I don't know what's the next step. It's this concept that we can push forward, that there is a power in a holistic, diverse community coming together and being curated all on the same platform. And in this age, because of our interconnectivity, we have an opportunity to make that concept go viral. and. Uh, through that, the ideas within each hub go viral. And so I, I think you'll start to see uh, not, not just, again, the idea of, of each hub adding a piece to uh, a larger solution, but in fact, new solutions entirely uh, being possible for the first time. What the hub is doing now is rediscovering what place means for collaboration and innovation around stuff that matters. If you believe that 25 of those communities spread around five continents with 5,000 people can be meaningful, then it's not much of a stretch of imagination to extrapolate that to 200 and 50,000 and the interactions that those people will be having globally when there are hubs in every major metropolitan area in the world. We imagine a future where there is a tipping point and the 50 to 100 people who come into close interaction with hub members, if you multiply that by 50,000, you start talking about three, four, five million people a year that are experiencing a physical platform of social change. Hub Express, it was started by uh, Emma Salgueiro, who's one of our uh, hosts here at the hub. And uh, it's a magical event. I hear, a lot, I hear all that, I hear community and network and platform and ecosystem. I just invite everybody to be very careful but also very ambitious by using and choosing the wording and then really living up to that and acknowledging that it's maybe not there yet but we are striving to that. So I don't know if, if any of you has seen an ecosystem. It's a freaking complex thing, you know. And for us to wanting to achieve that, that's a really ambitious task. So let's be really ambitious but also careful in what, how we frame things. Right. So that being said, ladies and gentlemen, it is now time to declare the gathering of the Global Hub Network 2011 in March in Madrid complete. Thank you. <laughs>
will be прикольно. Прикольно. I just thought it's face match with your glasses. Thank you. <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> I love okay. the, the blue style. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks a lot. See you at the hub.